Hello YouTube friends, hello YouTube family. Welcome to the second episode of Mike's Vehicle Vlogs. Some of the ideas that I've had when thinking about Mike's Vehicle Vlogs is I wanted to, to actually talk about maybe some of the other cars that I've had um, in the past. Um, I've had quite a few other cars. In this episode of Mike's Vehicle Vlogs, I'm going to talk about my very first car. Like everybody else, at least I would think that everybody else, you know, that that first car is something special. Get your license and you get your first car and it's like, it's like freedom. Uh, <laughs> you know, you're, even though you're, most of us, you know, we're not adults yet when we get our license or we get our car. You're like 16 and you get a car and you just kind of feel like, you just feel like you own the world. <laughs> so, to an extent, of course. Yeah, my first car was awesome. Um, I'm sure a lot of you may know if you've been a longtime subscriber to the channel to begin with. Um, I've been a huge Pontiac fan ever since I was a little kid. Um, I've had family members who've owned Pontiacs. Um, there was just always something about Pontiac that was, you know, uh, sporty, good looking, fun. Uh, you know, so it, they're a legendary brand, and to this day, you know, I. I still wish that they were around. I'd like to see what Pontiac could have put out um, in today's market. But that's not the case. So I've always wanted my first car to be a Pontiac. And sure enough, it was. So my very first car was a 1994 Pontiac Sunbird LE. And it was the two-door uh, coupe. And it was just, um, it was an awesome car. Um, my dad had originally bought it um, as a car that him and I can share um, because he he was actually involved in an accident um, and his his car had been totaled so um, I was on my way to getting my license and he um, ended up buying the Sunbird from a friend of his um, and it was good like I said it was going to be the car for us to share. This is my interior, half my interior. Yeah, yeah yours is on the other side. Shut up. <laughs> so, um, I didn't even have my license yet. I, I think I, I had my permit, and um, I <laughs> I drove it once um, with uh, my mom. We were coming back from the store, and the transmission uh, was slowly dying on the way back home. And by the time we got back to the house, it did not want to go anywhere. So, um, that was, I want to say, the only time that I'd actually driven the car. Um, well, I want to say maybe, maybe the first time um, that I had driven the car. Um, and it ended up dying. So, um, it sat for a, a while until we were able to um, <laughs> find and pay for uh, transmission for it, which actually ended up coming from a junkyard of course um, and then um, later on that um, that summer uh, my parents had actually divorced so my dad just left me the car uh, once it was fixed so I ended up getting the Sunbird to myself um, but then my mom's car broke and <laughs> I was kinda sharing the car with my mom I have a lot of memorabilia from my first car so um, we can start off with the keys. I actually, these are the keys that I used every day. And I remember I bought this specific Pontiac keychain uh, shortly after, um, I think it might have been after I got my license because then I was actually able to drive the car all the time. So I always kept them on the Pontiac keychain and of course, old school, you had the black key, and then you had the uh, the door lock key, so. <laughs> um, but these were the keys that I would use all the time. Uh, I remember when I got rid of the car, um, I gave the um, the buyer the other set of keys because I, I wanted to hang on to these ones since these were the ones that I used all the time. So I still have the actual keys to my first car. You know I've got the owner's manual to the car. Um, 
the 94 uh, Sunbird owner's manual. Uh, they all depicted the picture of the um, convertible version. <laughs> and, um, you know, so this was, I think, one of the first years that GM didn't actually put color pictures in their manuals because for years before that, all of the pictures and diagrams and stuff, they were all in color. But these were all black and white sketches. So I think that was the first year. The back cover is completely. Uh, ripped off, mind you. Uh, with that information, you know, the 1994 um, warranty and owner assistance information, and I have the, um, the the owners, first owners had actually wrote all the information down, which I don't know how many people actually do, but, you know. Um, so I actually have, you know, the VIN number here, um, the day that the car was actually purchased, and uh, the odometer reading. Um, so, my first car was actually purchased uh, at a dealership called Wheeler Cadillac Pontiac Incorporated. Uh, they were located in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. Um, honestly, at the top of my head, I don't know how far Johnstown, Pennsylvania is from where I am in Ohio, but my car eventually made its way over to the Ohio state line and over. Um, my car was purchased originally on August uh, 8th, 1994. And, um, it had 166 miles on the odometer. Um, I actually have my very first license plate. And uh, I have both sets, actually. I kept them because this, these were the first plates for my very first car, so I wanted to make sure that I had them. Um, this was the year that the state of Ohio had actually uh, done the, the bicentennial <laughs> plates with a different uh, design. They don't make them like this at all um, anymore. My car... Uh, <laughs> Along with actually having my first car, I had my first accident, um, and it was uh, actually, wow, the accident happened a little over a year of owning the car. Um, a lady had r ran a red light while I was crossing through the intersection, and she T-boned us from the side. Uh, my brother was in the back seat, and my best friend was up front with me, and uh, it was wet outside, so the car kind of fishtailed a little bit and I had to, to regain uh, control of the car but uh, luckily there's that train again um, luckily nobody had been hurt um, and it was you know devastating I, I do remember um, using the lady's phone cell phone because you know this is 2004 I, I didn't have a cell phone at the time Neither, none of us in my car did but the lady who hit us had a phone and I remember I, I you know was trying to get hold of my mom and I hadn't even really seen the side of my car yet but I did <laughs> see a piece of the trim laying in the street <laughs> and I I remember picking this up and uh, I was just I was devastated you know I was <laughs> I was grateful and, and, and thankful, you know, that we were all <laughs> alive and okay. But, you know, picking a piece of your car up off the road is just your first car even. It's like, ah, uh, it's, it's so heartbreaking. Matter of fact, uh, it being raining and stuff, I'm pretty sure, like, all of the road dirt and rain spots and stuff, I mean, that's all still embedded in into this, so... Yeah, that was that was pretty devastating to to see. I forgot it was that bad. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this happened at around 9:30 last night. So since I I actually had the VIN number of the car, what I wanted to do was pull up. Um, like a vehicle uh, history report online and I know some of the the bigger name um, websites who offer that you know they kind of um, they kind of charge you and uh, you know honestly I I don't have the money to to pay for the good reports um, but I did find uh, a website who that actually delivered um, quite a bit of information at no cost so um, you know I am actually learning a little bit more about my car now than 
I did when I owned it. My car was actually assembled in uh, Lordstown, Ohio, which um, I did not know that, that my car was built in Lordstown, Ohio. Right now, um, it's the same plant that they're using to build the Chevrolet Cruze, and it was also used to build the Cobalt before that, and before that it was used to build the, um, the Pontiac Sunfire and the Chevrolet Cavalier. Um, so I just didn't realize that because um, I think there were two different locations that the Sunbird had been uh, manufactured in. Uh, I think one, there was a plant in Mexico that built them and then there was the Lordstown, Ohio plant. And for those of you who don't know, like Lordstown, Ohio is not far from me at all. It's, it's definitely within um, an hour's range of where I am. So it's just awesome to know that my car was actually built locally. Um, so there was that. MSRP on my particular car was $10,239 brand new. And um, I, I never knew that. <laughs> I wish I was, I wish I had like the window stickers and stuff with them, but um, I think the LE trim started off um, around uh, $9,904 brand new actually. You know, there, my car had a couple of uh, you know different options um, my car had the optional automatic transmission uh, it was a three-speed um, it had the standard engine which was a two-liter uh, four-cylinder believe it put out 110 horsepower um, so there was that um, it did come standard with uh, analog brakes um, it came standard with power door locks um, I had manual windows I had a remote cassette player I had um, air conditioning, which I believe was optional. The air conditioning in my car didn't work, but that uh, that feature was there. You know, some things my car didn't have. I didn't have power windows. Um, I didn't have uh, intermittent wipers. I didn't have automatic headlights. Um, obviously, I didn't have a CD player. We vacuumed it out today, and uh, I cleaned it out. I guess I had a bucket of soap and water, and I tried to clean up as much of the, the dirty plastic I can. Didn't really work that much. That was all grimy in there, and in here it was too. And now it kind of looks brand new. At least I hope it does. Clean the inside of that out, and that. I dusted all this off. I cleaned off the steering wheel best I could. Over there, the doors over there too. I did the plastic all around the back and stuff. That's a lot of hard work. I'm bored, there's nothing else to do. You know, these doors are heavy. And they're kind of shut. That car's gotten worse. Um, to this day, the Sunbird is uh, definitely one of my all time favorite cars. Um, if I ever had the opportunity to get a Sunbird, uh, you know, as close to the one that I had, um, I would probably take it. Um, but they were becoming really rare, and you know, every once in a while I'll see one, you know, locally driving down the road and stuff, and they they look terrible. Um, <laughs> you know, they're all rusted out, they're all beat up. I mean, mine wasn't in the best condition, but you know, you're looking at 12 years ago. Uh, when I was still driving it and I mean mine was actually in, in pretty good shape um, it was only 10 years old um, at the time it was 11 years old when I had to get rid of it and uh, you know other than the fact that it was wrecked um, you know it uh, you know not until shortly after the accident was when everything else kind of started falling to pieces with the car my car my car.
My car. Chester. Wipers weren't turned off last night, perhaps? You got Taz. But you still have Tweety. Here we are. Under the hood. As you can see up close, I have a little leakage coming from right around there. Of oil, that is. It's it's a bit dirty. But it's it's not entirely that bad, I guess. It's funny over here. I mean, when you look in here, wait, it's all, okay, it's all dirty, but, but when you look up there, it's clean. Isn't that cool? <laughs> the air filter was now back in place, and I sprayed it, the screws with WD-40 because they were all rusted and hard to get out. Now the transmission went at one point, uh, the alternator ended up going at one point. That's a junkyard part, and, oh, you can't see my transmission. Well, you can a little, my transmission right there. That's a junkyard part. Um, somewhere down the line, the car <laughs> didn't want to start all the time, and um, this was actually when my mom and I were still sharing the car, but, you know, she would go out to, to try and start it, and it would just crank and crank and crank, and... You know, she she would give up sometimes, so then, you know, I'd go out there and I'd crank it, but I it always started for me. <laughs> um, very rare did the car never start for me. Let us see if the car will start today, because I haven't started it yet this morning. Today is not a good day. And so it lives. Never did find out why it, it didn't fire automatically on the first try. Um, it was usually the first start of the day where it didn't want to run uh, right away. And, you know, nowadays, you know, I've got, you know, more resources than ever to find out what it could have been. Um, if it could have been bad spark plugs, if it could have been bad wires, if it could have been a bad uh, coil pack, I mean, it could have been and uh, the injectors not shooting into the cylinder. I don't know. Um, you know, the possibilities of what could have been wrong with it, of me figuring out what could have been wrong with it, are there today. But I'll never know. All I do know is I'd get the car to start. I love my car. And my car loves me. <laughs> Before the accident, I actually had four new tires put on the car, and after those tires were bought, the car was complete. <laughs> I mean, there was nothing wrong with that car. Um, everything was running fine, everything was 
uh, maintenance and up to date and then the accident happened and like I said after the accident everything just kind of fell apart from there. The car was considered totaled um, because of, of where uh, the lady hit us. Um, she really put a nice she really did a nice number on the car. The insurance adjuster actually um, gave us an offer to buy the car back <laughs> and you know we were still able to actually get the the rest of the insurance money. Um, so I'm I bought my car back for like 80 bucks um, and uh, you know they just took it out of the insurance money and we used the rest of the money to actually um, buy a car for my uh, buy a car for my mom which ended up being uh, a 1992 Pontiac Bonneville SE I believe. I drove that car for as long as I could because I I honestly just did not want to give that car up. That car was, in my opinion, a phenomenal vehicle. After the accident, um, you know, more problems kind of started showing up here and there. Uh, one really weird problem, again, that nowadays I probably could have uh, figured out if I still had the car, um, was lack of acceleration. And what would happen is, you you can you can slowly accelerate if you kind of ease into the pedal if you had to to get the engine to actually rev hard rev fast um, but if you stomped on it it would kind of like It, it would just stutter until you let off the gas. <laughs> so to this day, don't know what that was about. Probably will never find out, and it doesn't matter now anyway, but that's what it used to do. What I think about most about the Sunbird is, um, you know, obviously myself driving it. And I just remember, you know, basically, I, I got to drive the car for like one summer. Um, before I had to quit quit driving it for good and um, you know in that summer that was just a great summer altogether um, you know I, I was actually in my my high school band um, I was going into my junior year of high school um, you know but I just remember you know being in the car and you know I had to have the windows down because the air conditioning didn't work and um, you know you just you feel being that it was a two-door the windows are wide you're getting a lot of air coming in um, my hair was long at the time so I just remember my hair blowing around everywhere um, I always had the music loud um, I had the little uh, cassette um, CD adapter that you'd plug into your portable CD player and had a spot for that to sit in the little cubby hole so I always had loud music playing oh, you. I saved your life A lot of wind back there, probably. Then again, not because you're sitting beside me pr practically. You can't even see my head. The Sunbird was really comfortable. Um, I, the seats were, I don't know, like there was something about the seats. They were just, they fit your body nicely. And the, um, the fabric, oh, the, I, the, there's something about the Pontiacs of that generation. They had like a, a specific scent to them that never went away. And it had to have been the fabric in the seats or definitely some, some sort of 
material that they used inside the car, but it, I don't know, I can't describe it. It's like, um, it's like some sort of sweetness, uh, you know, and, um, regardless of how dirty I may have let the car get, I mean, that natural scent was always there, and it was, I don't know, it's just, I've always liked the scent of those cars. The steering, I remember the steering wheel, the steering wheel was large, um, it had two, uh, ten and two grips on it, and, um, you know, it was it was a little bit of a thicker steering wheel altogether, but um, you know that car handled great. Um, the car was you know really zippy. Um, it was quick, just as long as you didn't over you know over push the accelerator. You know you can get it to be quick. The sound of that engine, uh, man, I I always loved the way the two liter sounds. I mean. It sounds, I always used to think that it sounds like a race car. Um, it kind of had that, that <laughs> noise to it. And um, it was just a good sounding engine. Like, <laughs> I just, I love the way it sounded. Um, there came a day when uh, the Sunbird just wouldn't even turn over, and it wasn't the battery, um, it wasn't uh, anything, it wasn't the starter. Um, it, there was something going on with the ignition switch, possibly, um, but somehow there wasn't any power going from the switch to the starter, and um, again, at the time, we didn't know what the issue could be. So I started driving the Bonneville and um, the Sunbird, you know, once I couldn't get the start anymore, it just, it sat. And it sat for a long time. The weeds and bushes behind the car started actually growing onto it. <laughs> um, and then finally, you know, the day came in October of uh, 2005 where I just, I, I was kind of forced to get rid of it. Hello here, ladies and gentlemen. Today is a very sad day. The red lightning is last time sitting in my driveway. And as much as I didn't want to, um, uh, a guy uh, that my that my mom knew offered me a hundred bucks for it, you know, to get rid of it and scrap it. Um, so he came to the house, and I remember. Uh, I made one more video of the car um, before I had I had to work that day, and I knew when I got home it was going to be gone. Um, so we pushed it out of the back of the driveway, and we um, left it there. I filmed it, and then I had to leave, and that was the last time I ever saw it. So yeah, like I said, you know, everybody's first car, in in my opinion, or to what what I believe is, you know, their first cars are always special. And, um, you know, the Pontiac Sunbird, also called Red Lightning. Uh, Red Lightning was a very special car, and, you know, as much as I wish I could have it today, I can't. But, like I said, you know, I've got all this, I've got all this stuff here to remind me of Red Lightning on all the awesome times that I've, I've had with her. Um, you know, I've got some videos... I've got pictures. Don't have enough video. I wish I had more video, but I got what I got, and that's all that matters. Red Lightning has had a cool life. I've had a cool life with Red Lightning. The sunburn marks on the hood from having the car sit in the sun. The, <laughs> the electrical tape that kept the water from coming in on that side because there was leakage because there's a big rust spot over there and it started seeping through, especially after the accident. Oh, I think this is it. I have to go to work, so this will be the last time I see Red Lightning. It was a good car. I will miss it, so... Farewell, Red Lightning. Here's to you, Red Lightning. Well, I hope you enjoyed this second episode of Mike's Vehicle Vlogs. Uh, please like, comment, 
uh, subscribe. Don't forget to watch Mike's Vehicle Spotlight, which is the official car tour uh, video um, segment on this channel. And, um, and yeah, thanks for watching, guys. So stay tuned for the next episode of Mike's Vehicle Vlogs, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.